of First Church family. We're so glad you could worship with us this morning. I wanted to give you a few announcements. Please check out the loop. There are so many things going on here in September. I don't want you to miss anything. But for your information, coming up this Thursday is a Senior Saints event at 2 p.m. They're going to have a barbecue and chips. And they are asking seniors to please bring some finger food. Um, on Sunday, September 4th for Labor Day weekend, we're having a family movie night at 6 p.m. So bring your chairs or bring your blankets and there'll be popcorn and drinks for everybody. Uh, Youth for Christ fundraiser banquet is coming up on September 13th from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, and I believe we're sponsoring a table for that. So if you are interested in attending that fundraiser, please see Pastor Bree for details. On September 18th, City on a Hill from Olivet is going to be here and leading worship for us, so you want to mark your calendars for that. And then we have, of course, our anniversary celebration coming up on October 1st and 2nd, and we hope that you are planning on attending and participating with us and inviting your friends and family. And also, let's not forget Pastor Appreciation that's coming up the whole month of October. We want to appreciate all of our great pastors and their families. Um, all the time, but especially coming up in October. So please start to think about how you can bless them. Have a great day. to come this morning and worship the Lord. Are you here this morning for that? Awesome. Well, good morning. Glad to be here to worship with you all. Hey, as we begin our time of worship, uh, let's take a few moments here and let's kick off our worship to the Lord uh, by taking up our tithes and offerings. So if you would, please join me this morning in prayer. Lord, we come this morning. Lord, it is good to be in your house this morning. Lord, we're, thank we're thankful for this opportunity to be able to come and do this together as a family. And so, Lord, as we come, really we have two goals in mind this morning, Lord. Our goals are that your name would be lifted up and that you would be praised here this morning. And that, Lord, we would not leave this place unchanged. So, Lord, our prayer is that you will come, meet with us this morning. Help us to, uh, to allow your word to change our lives. Lord, your word that has the power to do that. And so, Lord, we come this morning with open hearts and open ears to hear what you have for us this morning. So, Lord, we pray that you will be worshipped and lifted up this morning. Lord, as we do, we come before you and we bring before you our tithes and our offerings. Lord, I pray that this morning you will receive these gifts and Lord, you will help us to use them however you would have us to use them. Lord, be worshipped this morning in this time. We pray, pray this morning, Lord, both for the gift and the giver alike. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Those plates are down here in the front. Won't you please come?
right, let's take just a few moments here. Uh, kids, at this time, you are released to head back for Children's Church. And grown kids, you are released to greet one another. Tell someone you're happy to see them this morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning to you. Hey, wherever you are, would you go ahead and just stand up there if you're not standing just yet? Uh, that would be so good. It is good to have Torch House with us today. And uh, they're, they're our family. They really are. It, we are the, the family of God gathered to worship. And uh, I want you to bow your heads with me. Let's say a prayer as we begin our time of worship. Let's honor the Lord. Thank you, Father, today. You are so good. You are so good to us. And I pray, God, that we will honor you right now with the praise and the worship that you deserve. You deserve it, God. You deserve hearts, Lord, that are hungry for you. So we invite you, as uh, silly as that seems to sound at times, we do invite you. We invite you to come, minister to our hearts, but Lord, help us to minister to yours. You deserve it, and I pray, God, that you would rest upon these servants of yours today and use them for your glory, and the Lord, together, together as the body of Christ, that we will lift up your name, that we'll love you for your love that has come our way. It's in your precious name, your holy name. We all say together, amen. amen. Let's worship him together. some movement from y'all.
taste and see that the Lord is good to me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good to me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good to me. You've turned my morning into dancing put off my rags and clothe me with gladness and i will rise and i will praise you i'll sing and i'll be silent taste and see that the lord is good
Lord's Prayer is the most powerful prayer that's ever been prayed and ever shared with us to pray. But it was striking me as we were singing it just there for a few minutes. The Lord's Prayer is only realized. The Lord's Prayer is only realized. and in a group of people who have hearts to encounter the Holy Spirit. But the glory of God would be shown that His will would be done. Well, Pastor Tony is going to lead us in prayer this morning. But maybe there are some of us, myself included, we just, we just got to pray all the more. We've got to hunger all the more for the will of God to be done in our lives, in our families, in His church, in this community, in this nation, in the world. Let's hunger for the will of God to be done. Let's long for it to be done for His glory. Amen. I just feel led for us as a congregation. Let's let's recite the Lord's Prayer together before we go to the altar for prayer. And I only know it in the King James Version, so just uh, bear with me. Would you join me in saying the Lord's Prayer as a congregation? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, in Sunday school this morning, we were talking about Abraham and how he is the father of and it struck me this morning in Hebrews 11, starting in chapter in verse 17, Scripture says, By faith, when Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And something that really struck me this morning was God tests our faith so that we can grow stronger in our faith. The devil will tempt us. God, God doesn't tempt us. God will test us so that we can grow stronger, so that we can grow stronger in our faith. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, which Figuratively speaking, he did receive him back from the dead. Abraham was so convinced of God's promises that he did anything God asked him to do. He was willing to give up his most prized possession because God asked him to. And so this morning, if you're being, if you're being tested in your faith, I just invite you to the altar and, and Praise the Lord for it because He wants to make you stronger. He wants to make you stronger in your faith. And a lot of times in our flesh, we can ask, is, is this the devil or is this God? Well, we can know the answer if, if I'm being asked to advance God's kingdom, it's from God. If I'm being asked to advance a fleshly desire or a sin, it's Satan. And so this morning, if you want your faith to grow stronger, you can pray and ask God right where you are. But I invite you to come to the altar if you're struggling in your faith. If you feel like I'm just being tempted all the time or I'm, I'm tested and I don't understand why, just bring it to the Lord this morning. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we do thank you. As we sung about just a moment ago, your kingdom. 
Lord, your kingdom will come in power and in glory. And as your as your people, as your church, we await that glorious day when, when Jesus will part the sky and return just as he left. Lord, you will set up your kingdom on earth. Lord, it will be glorious indeed. We will be with you forever and ever. Lord, we won't have to face separation because of death anymore. There'll be, be no, more, no more sorrow or sickness or sin or, or lives being destroyed because we will be with you. And Lord, we can only enter that kingdom by faith. We've been talking about Abraham and how he is the father of faith and how in Genesis, he, he willingly was, was able to offer up his son, was going to offer up his son as a sacrifice. And it was a picture of, of Jesus Christ being the perfect sacrifice for us. Lord Jesus, when you walked this earth, you perfectly trusted and obeyed your heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, you also walked by faith. Because though you are God, you are, you are fully man as well. And you walked perfectly by faith. So Lord, today I pray for those who are struggling in their faith. Lord, they may be, they may be tempted to walk away. Lord, I just pray that you will strengthen them. Lord, help us to see into the future. Lord, that this world isn't all that there is. Lord, the best is yet to come for the believer. Lord, our trials and sufferings and the things we go through, Lord, they're not, not making light of them. Lord, they're very, very difficult, painful things and difficult things that people experience in their lives because of sin. Lord, but the best is yet to come. And so, Lord, I pray for those who... Lord, they need a change in their life today. They need, they need strength, and I pray that you will strengthen them from the inside out. Lord, I just pray the full armor of God over those who are struggling in their faith. Lord, your promises, Lord, they're eternal. They are eternal. Lord, you said you will never leave us or forsake us, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so, Lord, may your love cover those today who are struggling in their faith. Lord, you accept them. Lord, you love them. You died for them. And so, Lord, I pray today that your kingdom will be made powerful in their hearts today. Lord, that your kingdom will grow in their lives. Lord, that's what you designed the kingdom to do, for the kingdom to expand. Lord, you want the kingdom to expand everywhere Christians go. So, Lord, give us the strength to do that. Lord, you've given us everything we need in this life to fight off the devil. You've given us everything we need in this life for life and godliness. And so, Lord, we thank you for it. Thank you for it, Lord. Strengthen our faith. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. Lord, may each one of us say, may that be the cry of our hearts today. May your will be done in my life, Lord. I may not understand it 100%, but Lord, speak to me clearly that I know it's you. Speak to me through your word. Speak to me through music. Speak to me through the church. Lord, give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what you have for us today. I thank you for this time of worship, Lord, as we are being drawn into the, the throne room before the king of glory. I just pray for Pastor Denny as he preaches today. Anoint his tongue. Move our hearts today, Lord. Move our hearts today to respond what you have for us. None of us are here on accident today. Lord, and I pray for those who are watching online as well. Lord, may you move us by faith. To you be the glory, both now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Love you all. Thank you for leading us today. I'm, I'm ready to preach the word. <laughs> uh, stand with me as we honor God in his word today. Uh, as you're standing up, just look to somebody and say, hey, that's, that, that's not what I said. <laughs> just look to somebody and say, God loves you, and I do too. Can you do that? Oh, somebody needs that today. Somebody needs that today. Oh, so good. Uh, we continue for just a few more weeks, really, 
as uh, we come to the uh, closer to the end of, of the series, summer long series. Uh, this will be one of the longer series that I've ever been a part of, but I, it's been a help to me to be in God's Word, and I pray it has to you too. Uh, someone may be asking, well, what's this series been about? What's well, been about the Word of God? And uh, if, if you've not been in the Word of God on a regular basis, um, just know that you can jump in right now. You can, you can begin to look into God's Word and begin to read His Word, which is life to all of us. It's alive. Uh, we've been looking into a, a, a kind of a Bible reading plan called the E100, Essential 100, 100 areas of Scripture, starting from Genesis that goes all the way to Revelation, that kind of just see, helps us to see the story of God. It doesn't mean that we are excluding uh, any parts of the Bible because we don't like them. That's not the case. It's just helping us to see uh, out of a hundred different areas of God's Word as we move through what the story of God is telling us. Uh, you can go on onto you version on the Bible app, or we've got some of those copies out there on the Welcome Center too. But just be in God's Word. I tell you, one of the things that will uh, that will help you and me to know Him more, to follow Him better, to be more, to be stronger in faith. And I tell you what, to have more hope in our life, it's into His Word we find that. Are you with me? You want guidance in your life? Go to God's Word. Are you struggling with something? Go to God's Word. It's, it's the truth. It's the truth. So let's look together this morning. The victorious Word of God is what this whole time has been called. But specifically today, it's about turning toward Jesus. So let's read this together. Acts. As he was approaching, that's Saul, Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, and the voice replied, here we go, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Hmm. I don't know if Paul did that after he heard that message. Hmm. Because a lot of times, if you're told what to do, sometimes that, that, that response is what is given. Hmm. Like, who's telling me to do what maybe I don't want to do? It's time to turn to Jesus. Father, I pray that you would help us to understand clearly what you are saying to us through your word here in Acts. May your will be done. We have sang, we've prayed, oh God, and we're asking for it again. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In your precious name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen. Thank you for honoring God's word by standing. You may be seated there. It's time to turn to Jesus. Last week, we, we looked specifically about you and I having a, an urgency, really living a life of urgency for the coming of Jesus. I think we, we freshly established again the truth that Jesus is coming again. Amen. He is coming again, and he's cl- it's closer now. I believe his song says, says it this way. He's, it's closer now than it's ever been. It's true. So don't allow what you have maybe heard for decades in your life, don't allow that to woo you to sleep to the truth that Jesus is coming, and we need to function in our lives with a sense of urgency that he is coming, and I want to be ready, I want to make sure I'm living a life that says I'm ready to help other people around me to be ready too. I don't want anybody to miss this. So for us to be ready, for others to be ready, we've got to understand what it means to turn to Jesus. Sometimes... And we don't like it this way, but sometimes there are things that must happen that are drastic in our lives that begin to move us to a turn. The the direction that we may be going, that we have concluded is okay for us, 
or that we have talked to many of, to too many other people that, that the way I'm going, the way I'm living is okay, that we need something to happen like Saul had happened to him on the road to Damascus that suddenly got his attention. So what turned Paul around? Let me give you just a little bit of a backstory on Saul. Again, we're talking about Saul that became Paul, and through his life he was referred to both names, but more so in the latter part of his life as Paul. Saul was one bad dude. He was mean. He was nasty. From from. What history says, he wasn't real good looking either. But get this. Saul was very, very religious. Well, aren't all religious people good people? No. Are all religious people strong in their faith to God? No. Are all religious people true True, devout followers of Jesus surrender to Jesus? No. Some of the most religious people can be some of the most wicked. Some of the most religious, those who appear to be the most devout, can be the most evil. And God saw something in Saul. Why would he see something in Saul that he, maybe he didn't see in someone else. Remember this. God made Saul. God knitted Saul together in his mother's womb, just like you and me. So when he did that with Saul, as he did you and me, he knitted Saul with a divine purpose for God's own glory. And, and he saw that so much in, in Saul, and, and I guess the enemy picked up on it, So the enemy was using Saul for terrible things, and God was saying, no, I've made this this man for my glory, so something's got to get his attention. Something's got to turn him. He can't keep going this direction. Something has got to get a hold of him that will begin to turn his his footpath and, and make it go in the direction I have determined for him. And God looks at you and me the same way. I want you to go down the path that I have made for you. I want you to live out what I have designed you for. I want you to live into the glory of my name. Stop looking in all these other directions. Stop thinking that you can find what what will satisfy and appease you. I've got, God is saying, I know what you need. I know what you need. Just a little bit more on Saul here. He was out to destroy the people of Jesus, the followers of Jesus. You can find it there in in Acts, Acts 8, where where Stephen, Stephen has been, who was a devout follower of Jesus, he is dragged off and and he begins to tell people about why he's there, what he's he's standing for, and and, and right up on the ledge of of the area where, 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 where they drug Stephen to is Saul. The people were so infuriated with what Stephen was was teaching and preaching about that they began to stone him. And who was giving their approval? Saul was. And this is right prior to this, this Damascus experience. We're talking about a guy who was out to kill off Christians. And God had a plan. Let me just ask you this question. Is there anybody that is ever too far gone that God can't do something with them? And as quickly as we say, no, God can do anything with anybody, uh, how many of us have been pretty quick to say, oh, but I don't know about so-and-so? And none of us really want to raise our hand on that because we don't want to be known as that kind of a person. 
God can do anything with anybody, but I don't know about him. <laughs> Have mercy. Uh, God can do anything with anybody, but you know about her? So here is Saul on the road to Damascus to do what? That's right. Willing to, willing to do whatever it takes to stop these people who say they're followers of Jesus. So again, verse 3 here of Acts 9. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a, again, a mission of persecution, a, a mission of murder if need be. It didn't matter to, to Saul. He was, he, was, he was willing to do whatever it took to complete this mission, to take care of this mission. It was his life's mission to destroy the followers of Jesus. It says, a light from above suddenly shone down around him. So when a light comes down upon us that is so bright and it's all the way around us, we cannot see anything else but the light around us, it will paralyze. We don't know which way to go, where to turn, because wherever we are, all we, all we see is this bright light that has captured us. Paul, it says, so he fell down to the ground, <coughs> excuse me, and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He was living an ungodly life, but he met Jesus. He was living a life of, of complete destruction. But he's meeting Jesus. We're, we're, we're trying to establish what does it take for someone like Saul to be turned around. To take a turn in their life. They're living a life that, that is complete and utter destruction. They're, they're, de they're destroying themselves as they destroy other, other people's lives too. So what's it take? See, this, this man, he had a plan. Saul was on a mission but he met Jesus. Things change when people meet Jesus. We can pray specifically sometimes for, for actual specific things in people's lives to either stop or go away or that they would stop. We'll, we'll pray for those things. They'll stop doing this or going there or acting that way. We need to pray that people will meet Jesus and everything will change when that happens. Are you with me? <clears throat> yes, we want someone to stop doing drugs. Yes, we want someone to stop their fornicating. We, yes, we want someone to stop their cheating. Yes, we want all of those things to stop. But I'm, we gotta, we got to believe it with all of our heart that if people will meet Jesus on their path, things will change. So let's bring it home to us. If we want something to change in our life, we need to have a fresh meeting with Jesus. You sick and tired of being sick and tired? Well, you need to have a fresh meeting time with Jesus. You tired with the old humdrum of life or whatever you want to call it? Why don't you just take some time and have a fresh meeting with Jesus? Because I'm telling you, what the, what, what the Word is showing us is true. And it will happen for you and me if we will have a fresh time with Jesus. There will be a movement that takes place and how we're journeying in life. And we will take a turn from where we are. Things will change. Tired of the stinking thinking? Well, meet Jesus. He'll give you his mind. It's a beautiful thing. We, he, Jesus won't do like some folks who, who would love to give you a piece of their mind. He, he will give you his mind. 
Isn't that good? <laughs> Some of you just thought who you would like to give a piece of your mind to. I know how this goes. I know how it goes. And whatever you would say, you would finish it with in the name of Jesus. I know. You make it spiritual. Oh, how we need to meet Jesus freshly. Who are you, Lord, says verse 5 of Acts 9. Saul asked, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Whew. Jesus wants every person to know the light of himself. Jesus wants every one of us and everyone that we know and everyone that we don't know to know the powerful, life-changing transformation that takes place when His light is, is placed upon our pathway. His light changes the course of a direction. His light, folks, listen, changes outcomes of horrible decisions. His light can take, take what has happened in your past and bring His glory through it. Does that mean the past that you have has anything good about it? You can say that much of what we have experienced that we would say is bad, it's not good. But God is able to work everything for good. Does it mean that everything is good? No. But it's for good. So Jesus says to Saul, after he says, this is who you're persecuting, now I want you to get up, I want you to go to the city, and you will be told what you must do. Saul had not been operating that way. He was the one calling the shots. He was the one that was telling people what to do, where to go, how to go, how to do what needs to be done. He, he wasn't used to receiving demands, course of action. And now he's hearing a voice saying, you get up, you go to the city, and I'll tell you what to do next. As much as I would say all of us do not like that kind of, of uh, we don't like that kind of communication. Some of us need someone who loves Jesus with all their heart and loves us with all their heart to come alongside us and say enough of that. Are you hearing me? Enough of that kind of talk. Enough of that kind of behavior. Enough is enough is enough. It's, it's time to get up and go, and then we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find out what we should be doing next because however it's being done now is not good. Mm. This got Saul's attention. He, he couldn't debate it. Oh, we, we don't want to forget this. He was struck blind. That might have been a game changer. Sometimes we need God's help through the Holy Spirit to be blinded to the things of the world so that He can begin to show us what we need to be seeing and how we need to be seeing it. Sometimes we have seen way too much of what the world has to offer and it has, it has blinded us to the things of God. So we need a, a recalibration of our sight. Get up and go to the city and you'll be told what to do. Saul met Jesus, the Savior of the world, on that road that day. And we can just say it right here now. Everything about Saul's life changes this day for forever. It ain't going to be the same again. 
That's why you and I need a fresh time with Jesus. We need that so that it renews us and strengthens us and keeps us on the path that has been ordained by God for us. It's not something that's aloof. It's not something just off of a whim or by coincidence. God has provided us a direction and a, and a course of action, and he does not want us to miss it, but the enemy of our soul doesn't ever want us to get it. So we need fresh time with Jesus. We need a fresh talk with Jesus. Further, Saul was chosen to be a difference maker. Now, prior to this, you get, got the picture. He is definitely making a difference, but it's for the destruction of people. Watch this, verse 10. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. And the Lord said, go over to Straight Street in the house of Judas. When, when you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see. Mm. So he can see. Oh, God, open up our eyes so we can see. Bless his heart. The difference had to be made in Saul first. The difference had to be made in Saul first. He had to meet Jesus first so that God could begin to utilize him to be the difference maker that he made him to be in the first place. And that's you and me. We've, we've got to meet with Jesus so the difference can be made in us first. What are you saying, preacher? I've met with Jesus. I've been a Christian for a long time. We need fresh time with Jesus so that we don't get our personal preferences in the way of God's provision and God's direction and God's plan. We can pray all day long for the will of God to be done on earth as it is in heaven, but if, but if there is something that is, that is in the way of us being connected to God's will, it will not be fulfilled in us nor through us. So we will get so, we will get so frustrated, spiritually frustrated, and it will move to a, an attitude of, of frustration and bitterness towards God because things aren't seeming to, to work out the way we think that they be, should be working out. And we have something that's in the way prohibiting the will of God being done. There was definitely something in the way with Saul's life. Something had to be broken in him. There was chains that were holding on to him. And he had to be blinded so that he could run away from what God wanted him to do. He had to be led into the city. Again, this is not the way the dude operated. He was the man in charge. I don't need anybody's help. I'll go where I want to go and I'll do whatever I want to do in the name of God. He was, a, he, he, was, he was a very religious man. He had to be led by those that were, that were his posse along with him. Now watch this. Ananias is receiving this from God. He's being told where to go, who to talk to. He's, Saul is praying right now to him. Watch this. Verse 13. But Lord, <laughs> but Lord, you ever, you ever said that? But Lord, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done. So 
He's operating off a of hearsay, right? I've heard about these terrible things this guy did. To believers in Jerusalem, and he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go! <laughs> Go! I've used this word, so I grew up with it. Again, I, I, I tell you, I don't know what it really means. It just was what we used. He, Ananias was him hauling around. He's him hauling. He's, he's, trying, he's trying his best not to go through with this. Because of what he had heard about Saul and what Saul, what he believed Saul would do to him if he went to him. God says, go. <laughs> For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the, the, the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. So the guy that has been out to destroy the church is now going to be God's messenger to the church. Oh, oh wait a minute. What? The, the, the guy that was out to kill, it didn't, didn't matter to him. Whatever it was going to take to stop this movement of these Jesus people, whatever it took, and now God is saying this guy, this guy who has a notorious, notorious reputation of being a killer, being a destroyer, being one nasty dude, this is going to be the guy that I'm going to use to make a difference in the world. This should just grab our attention that if this can happen to a guy like Saul, this can happen to you and me too. And it can happen to those people we say, can it really happen to them? If God's will is really God's will, then God can do incredible things if people will have a time with his son. Saul was an enemy to believers. Now he's a brother with the believers. Once Ananias got to where, 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 where Saul was, one of the first things out of his mouth was he called Saul brother. So whatever kind of meeting he had, Ananias had with Jesus, it convinced him that whatever God wanted to do with Saul, it was going to be done. And now this guy who was, who was a destroyer is now going to be one that delivers the message of hope and joy and peace and salvation to people who need Christ. You see, the enemy wants... You and me to believe, wants other people to believe that however they have lived, it's, it's, it's going to keep them from being a part of what God wants to do in their life. It's not possible because what have you have done in your past or what you might be living right now is not of God. And so the enemy says, no, no, not you. You can't happen with you. Just forget it. Don't. That, what that preacher's preaching about today, I just let that go. He's just trying to give lip service to help people feel better. No, this is God's word. If it can happen with Saul, it can happen with you. And it can happen with me. It can happen with, with what you might deem to be the dirtiest scoundrel that this, this county has ever seen. I'm going to go a step further. If God can do it with Saul, he can do it with every single person on the planet. That includes politicians. That, 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 that includes, listen, that includes serial killers. I know, I know this doesn't make any sense to us because we, don't, we operate way too much in the, in, the, in the finite. But God can do anything. He can save anyone. He can transform any life. We've got to believe that. If we don't believe that, then there is no hope for you and me. I, 
And it's hard for us to even fathom that, that God can transform certain lives that seem to be out for, for so much destruction and evil and godlessness. But, but he did it, and he has done it, and he will do it again if people will have a, just a meeting with Jesus on their journey. Some of you need to have renewed hope that God can still save your kids through the, through the power of his son Jesus. Some of you need to believe with all your heart that, that we're, the path that, that, that your child is traveling or your spouse is traveling or some, uh, someone else that you hold near and dear to your heart, that, that God can still turn that life around. And some of you right now personally need to believe that God can turn your life right now where it's at. Some of you are living in some sense of despair and discouragement, distraughtness. Uh, it's chaos. There, there's fear. There's anxiety. All of those things. Have a meeting with Jesus. Be open for a meeting with Jesus. And he'll begin to turn your path. His light will shine upon and around you. He can stop you and me right in our tracks. Oh, please do it, Lord, if that's what it takes. He can blind us to the things of this old world Lord, if that's what's needed, please do it, Lord. And guide me where I need to go. Oh, it doesn't stop there, though. Listen. And Saul was helped by others to do what God called him to do. So Ananias, he went and he found Saul, as I said. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, hmm. Oh, it just touches my heart. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, the word says, instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. He hadn't eaten for three days. Something like scales. Could it be possible that any of us might have some type of scales on our eyes that's keeping us from seeing what, what God wants us to see? That over time, possibly, that, that we have become too, too religious and we have somewhat forgotten that the relationship with Jesus is where, where our righteousness comes from. That we need God's help. We, we need His touch. That, that's, that whatever would be prohibiting us from seeing the way we should see, we would receive His help, His healing, His restoration, so that we could begin to see what He wants us to see. And then as He guides our life, we don't have to wonder. We're able to see His, His unseen hand guiding us on the path of righteousness. Is the path of righteousness always a pleasant one? No, no. Because you see, God, God said through his son Jesus to Ananias that, that, he, that, 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 that there's, there's some words coming Saul's way to let him know what he is to do and then I, what he is to suffer for my namesake. See, if you and I are going to be deliberate in our denying of ourselves so that we can follow Jesus, I mean, full surrender, there, there is not going to be a cakewalk for us. It's going to be a tough journey for us, but we, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we can go as He says go, do whatever He says do without question. This is how Saul, becoming Paul, conducts the rest of his life. 
He is so, so thrilled, so enamored by what God has done through Jesus Christ that there is no turning back. No turning back. He becomes a warrior for the faith. The greatest missionary that, that, the, that the church of Jesus Christ has ever known. Why? Because he didn't look back. And he did not look at whatever his life would, would be entailing, whatever he would have to go through, shipwrecks, being, being beat up, being stoned to death, all the, to, being stoned to try to kill him. All. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. He was determined to live for Jesus, the one who stopped him on his destructive journey and changed his life forever. If he has changed your my, and my life, oh, we need his help desperately to live for him, to honor him for it. If he has saved us from our sins, if he has broken the chains of darkness and despair, we need to live for him and honor him for doing so. So if we need to pray, if we need to spend some time saying, Lord Jesus, I need a meeting with you. I need some time with you. I, I, I need a deliverance. I, I need a healing. I need the scales from my eyes to be removed. I, I, I need a new course in my direction. I need guidance. He'll provide it. Because he, just like Saul, made you and made you to live a life that honors him. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days, it says. And immediately he began preaching. Began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is indeed the Son of God. If he's made that kind of a difference in you, you've got to tell somebody. Got to tell somebody. If Jesus has saved you, if Jesus has turned your life around, if he has guided you on your, on your path, whatever you were living, however you were living it, and began to lead you in another direction that gave you hope and peace and, and the, the wonderful gift of eternal life, you got to share it with somebody. And old Saul, my goodness, the, the first thing he does out of the gate after he has ate, eaten some food, after he's been healed and touched and filled with the Holy Spirit, he starts preaching. Verse 21, it says, all who heard him were amazed. Stand with me right now, would you? Everyone. They were amazed. And I can, I can see this scenario being played out. People watching, listening, and saying to each other this. Isn't, isn't this the same man? Isn't this the same guy who was, who was causing such devastation among Jesus' followers and disciples? Wasn't this the same guy? Isn't this the guy we heard about? Isn't this the guy that, that, that beat, up, beat up our cousin because he was following Jesus? Isn't this the same one? People, people will talk. People will talk. In today's world, people will text. People, people will message. Did you hear what so-and-so was doing? So-and-so who, who used to do you know why? 
is now telling people about Jesus? Is this legal? Does this work? Is this okay? Is this believable? Isn't this the same guy who caused all of this devastation among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem? And they ask, and didn't he come here to arrest those who are followers of Jesus and drag them off? Oh, what a change Jesus makes. Oh, what a change Jesus can make. Oh, what a change Jesus wants to make. He wants to make it. He wants to make it in you, in me, in your kids, in your spouse. And, and you're all of your family members who are running amok. He wants to make a change. He wants to turn people's lives in his direction. And he can use anybody, anybody that will have a meeting with him. He can do anything with anybody who will have a meeting with him. Let's Pray and let's believe that God, if he needs to, will stop us in our tracks, stop our, stop our loved ones in their tracks, whatever is needed for people to begin living a life that honors him. Oh, my. Praise God that he's still doing that and wants to. Cortez, would you come? Would you bow your heads with me as they come? Uh, I just want to uh, encourage you this morning. And this is every single one of us. Let's take a few moments and give those few moments to Jesus. And let's spend a little time with him. There is nothing, absolutely nothing more important than that right now. I promise you. For every one of us. And as they begin to play and sing. If you come, I always invite you to come to the altar of prayer. If you can't kneel, find a place and the front seats, but I, I just invite you as the body of Christ, the family of God, to have some time, spend some time allowing Jesus to minister to your heart. And if he speaks something into your life, receive it. If you sense him guiding you, then you go with it. Because he wants you to live the life that he created you for. To honor him. And I promise you this. If you will spend more time with Jesus, your life will begin to reflect that light that shines down around you. And people that maybe you've been praying for for years... It might be your time with Jesus that changes everything for them. For they might see the light that shines through your life. It may change the course of eternity for them. See, it, it is that important for us to live close to Jesus. It is that important for us to want to live close and hear Him and we want to receive conviction in our lives, if need be, for us to have a life that honors Him, that nothing would be in the way of that. Would you begin to sing there, Michelle?
So I invite you this morning to come. Spend some time with Jesus. Let his light shine upon you. Let him speak into your life. Let him tell you that he's got a plan for you. It's a plan for good and not for disaster. It's a plan for hope and peace and joy. From the youngest that's in here to the eldest. We're still alive today. There is still work for us to do. There's still a life to be lived for the Lord. Let's meet with Jesus. Have a fresh, fresh meeting time with him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The atmosphere is changing. Oh, if he could, if he could get it, he could do it with Saul, he could do it with you and me. The spirit of if he could change the direction of a, is here. a nasty old guy that's out to do, do nothing but destruction, he could sure change the course of our direction. That God would get a hold of. Oh, God, get a hold of us. Make a difference in us so that you can use us to be a difference maker for those who are praying for. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. change in the life? When is there going to be a change in the church? This is what makes the difference. This is the change agent. This is the turnaround. This is what brings about freshness and renewal and reviving is when we spend more time with Jesus ourselves.
there was nothing more powerful that, that we could pray. There was nothing more important to pray. There's nothing, Lord, more needed today than your will to be done. I pray for my brothers and my sisters. We're here together. We're praying together. We're believing together for your work in our lives, for your movement, Lord, in our lives, your movement in the family of God, your movement in our families, in our homes, Lord. That, that what we learned about last week, it remains to be the case this week. We, we've got to be urgent about the things of God. We've got to long for the things of God. We've got to be hungry for the things of God. And we've got to be got to be hungry for a fresh encounter with Jesus. Oh, Lord, change us wherever we need changed. Transform us, Lord, wherever transformation needs to occur. Lord, may there be salvation where there is need of someone being saved. God, I pray that wherever there is forgiveness needed, that people will cry out for forgiveness. Lord, wherever there is need for the chains of this old world to be broken, for freedom to be known, and victory to be found, that Lord, we will not settle for anything less. And then, Lord, we will take we will take this example of what you have shared with us through your word, that you can change anybody for your glory, and that we will be like Paul. We will be like Saul, becoming a man of God, Paul. That from day one, I'm not looking back. I'm not turning around, going backwards. I'm going forward with Jesus. I'm going to share the message of Jesus. Come, come hell or high water, it doesn't matter. I'm going to live for Jesus, for he is the Savior of the world. pray fresh anointing upon brothers and sisters who are hungry for freshness of the Lord. I pray, God, that we will all be struck with a greater conviction of living for you with a reckless abandonment to self and the things of the world. Oh, God, I pray that you will help us to be a light in the midst of the darkness. And that, that includes, Lord, things that maybe we have, have tolerated for much too long or that we have allowed for much too long or that we have looked the other way for much too long. Oh, God, help us to take a stand for the things of God so that, Lord, we are prepared well for all eternity to be with you. Praise your name, Lord, together. Thank you, Father. Uh, thank you, Father. Praise your name. Praise your name. Oh, can we say praise the Lord together? Can we say hallelujah together? Can we, we even say glory to God together? Yes. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that we are victorious over the enemy of our soul. We know the enemy of our soul. Oh, my. He's fighting mad when people begin to be alerted to their need for Jesus, more of Jesus. That, that there is no need to turn back because there's nothing worth turning back to. Oh, the enemy hates that. But we praise our God. We praise our God today that we are victorious over the schemes of of our nasty enemy. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Oh, God is good, yes. Amen. I tell you, you might stand and go ahead and stand. Let's sing just a chorus or two of celebration before we exit this house and go into the mission field.
God bless you. You get out there and you shine the light like never before. Love you all. Have a great week.